Welcome to the Virtual Boat for Environmental Education. Come aboard and join us as we explore the features of this game. Before we begin our exploration, let's select our character. You can use the buttons at the top left corner of the screen to personalize your character. Once you're satisfied, tap the Play Now button to proceed with the game. Now we're ready to begin the game tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to navigate the boat along the river to reach our exploration sites. First, we'll take a quick tour of the boat. You can walk around by moving the gray joystick in the lower left corner. On the left side of the boat, we have a data sonde which will lower into the river to measure water quality parameters. We can view the results of these measurements at the laptop located on the right side of the boat. Click on the laptop, then the data sonde icon to view the results. Now let's head to the cabin and learn to drive the boat. Use the joysticks on each side of the boat to navigate along the river. You can move the boat ahead by dragging the left joystick forward. Pulling the left joystick back will bring the boat to a stop. The right joystick controls the steering, allowing you to maneuver left and right. The location of the boat is displayed at all times in the upper right corner of the screen. The purpose of this tutorial is to demonstrate how the students can use the fish kill game to understand how sources of pollution can lead to fish kills. The students will drive the boat to one of six locations, the first being the site of the fish kill, as well as five additional waypoints of sources of contamination. The students can drive the boat by entering the helm and locating where they are on the map by clicking the Where Am I button. The students will then be asked to drive the boat to the site of the fish kill to collect data. While driving the boat, locations where the students are supposed to collect samples will be indicated by the glowing green orbs. Once at the site, the students will have to exit the helm of the boat and walk to the rear to deploy the data sound. The first location where they'll be collecting data is at the site of the fish kill. Press the image of the data sound to deploy it into the Ohio River. Once the sound is deployed and the data is collected, the students will then be asked to go to the computer to look at the data the sound collected. <clears throat> when looking at the water quality data, the sound collects temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen, nitrate, phosphate, turbidity, as well as images of an E. coli plate from the site. After data is collected from the fish kill, the students will then drive the boat to the next sampling location. The next sampling location is the abandoned mine. Once the boat reaches the abandoned mine, the students will leave the helm and again deploy the data sound 
At the abandoned mine site, notice the decrease in pH. The next waypoint will be the farm. At the farm, notice the increase in nitrate and phosphate concentrations associated with farm runoff. The next sampling site will be the wastewater treatment facility. Again, notice the increased nitrate, phosphate, as well as turbidity from the wastewater treatment facility. The next sampling site will be the power plant. At the power plant, notice the increase in turbidity. The final sampling site will be the chemical plant. At the chemical plant, again, the students will deploy the sand and analyze the collected data from all five potential sources of contamination. Once all of the data is collected, the students can then walk through an example of how to calculate the water quality index value for each of the sites. The water quality index value assigns a, a score for each individual parameter, and the sum of those scores will then give you the water quality index. Once you have all of the WQI scores for each of the sites, you will then be able to determine the quality of the water. Thank you for playing the fish kill game. The Thank Winkler you. method is used... Oh, there we go. The Winkler method is used to measure dissolved oxygen within water to ensure conditions for fish, plankton, and algae, and any other living organisms are healthy, and monitor aerobic decomposition rates in polluted waters. First, we're going to add eight drops of manganese sulfate stored in a squeeze bottle to the water sample.
Next, we add eight drops of alkali iodide azide stored in a squeeze bottle to the same sample bottle. Now we mix the sample. If oxygen is present, a brownish-orange cloud of precipitate will appear. Next, add eight drops of sulfuric acid to the water sample. After this, invert several times to dissolve the precipitate. Now fill the titra titration syringe with one millimeter of sodium thiosulfate. Add one drop of sodium thiosulfate at a time to the mixed water sample. Swirl until the sample becomes white yellow. Now add eight drops of starch indicator solution stored in a squeeze bottle until a deep blue color forms. Now continue to slowly add starch indicator solution uh, one drop at a time until the sample turns clear. This is a titration. Adding one mil of sodium uh, sodium thiosulfate indicates 0 0.025 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen within the water sample. Welcome to the geocaching game. The geocaching game can be found as a tab on the main menu screen within the virtual boat app. This game takes the player through the character modification screen, but this process may be quickly skipped straight into the virtual boat interface if the player has already chosen a character model. The boat can be driven by moving your fingers across the iPad in the direction the player wants to move. The game begins with a note left for the player on the boat by someone who seems to have seen some of the player's research papers being blown off of the boat during a windstorm. These lost notes detail the proper instructions for using water sampling and testing equipment, and it is up to the player to find them. The main objective of the geocaching, geocaching game is tracking down these notes, which are represented in-game by blue buoys, by driving the boat to different locations using a GPS locator at the top right of the screen. An inset map is available for reference at the bottom right of the screen. This inset map shows the player's approximate location within the river stretch, which is the same stretch of river used across all of the virtual boat games. At any time during the game, the player will be able to access a map of this stretch of river. The map may be accessed by touching the Where Am I box at the top left of the screen. Because the coordinates on the GPS locator are in decimal degrees and the map coordinates are in a degrees, minutes, seconds notation, the player must be able to convert between the two in order to locate the papers which are marked on the map. Conversion between de uh, degrees, minutes, seconds, and decimal degrees is done by a series of truncation and multiplication. The numbers to the right of the decimal is first multiplied by 60, and the resulting number represents the minutes value. If the minutes value also has a decimal component, the decimal is removed from the minutes value and multiplied again by 60. The resulting number represents the second value. In this way, the player can convert between decimal degrees and degrees minutes seconds in order to locate the missing papers. This method can be compared to time where there are 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour. If the player ever gets confused about how to convert between the two, a geography co coordinate video may be accessed in-game at the top left of the screen. Whenever a player stumbles across a paper, the location of the next paper is marked on the map. The game ends once the player has located all of the missing papers.